So recently I did a Bible study and in the Bible study, I touched a little bit on marriage and um, the duties of a husband and of a wife. But today I just really wanted to touch on that. Um, whenever I read my Bible, sometimes I take notes in my Bible and then sometimes I actually have a journal that I kind of write down my thoughts on certain topics. Um, and I just did a whole one on marriage. I do this for my girls, so it's kind of broke down for them. And I eventually am going to type all this up and have it kind of get each one of them bound for when they graduate high school or get married. But on the marriage of topic, today I had a conversation with a dear friend of mine about marriage. You know, how beautiful and wonderful it is to have such a great marriage and... I mean, of course, we've had our years. We had one year, actually, in the last two or three years. That was just, it was a rough year for us. Um, but we come back from it. We come back from it strong. There was no, you know, big blow up or infidelity. It was just during COVID, we were spending a lot of time with each other. I was going through this huge thing with depression. Um, we had our business. Uh, closed down. It didn't do so well. We actually were open at the beginning of COVID and then COVID hit pretty strong. And so there was a lot of things that kind of really was the cause of that. And it was our fault because we weren't exactly in the place with the Lord that we are now and that where we should have been. But I did want to talk about the topic of marriage and how important it is. Um, but so biblically, you know, the Bible says that when a husband and wife are married, they become one flesh. And I am a huge believer in this. I'm a huge believer in not just in just the concept of love and devotion and respect to one another. That after after the Lord and your walk with Him and your faith, it is the next biggest, um, most important thing in your life. And for us, it, it truly, it truly is. I love, we, we love our babies, but our marriage is the second most important thing for us in our life. More than our children, our jobs, our friends, our other family members. We love them deeply. I mean, you know, his mom is like my mom. My mom is his mom. I mean, we are very close to our, each other's families. But for us, our marriage after our faith is absolutely the most important thing. And that means taking time for each other um, at always. I mean, there's times where the kids will just go to our parents and then we'll we'll just spend the night doing nothing. I mean, I honestly have the time we don't even do anything. We stay at home. We just spend time together. He'll watch a ball game. I'll read the Bible or we'll watch a movie together. Um, just something where it's just us. Um, and our time together, of course, going out is great too, but I mean, you can bond and love just as much sitting on the couch and enjoying each other's company just alone without kids and without worrying about work or anything else. Um, but I think, like I said, the, the most important thing after your faith, of course, is marriage. And um, God says that, you know, both parties are very, very important. Um, whosoever, it says in Proverbs 18, 22, that whosoever find a wife, find a good thing and obtaineth favor in the Lord. Um, sometimes it takes a while to find that spouse. For us, we started dating when we were like 15, 16, and we are now 35 and 36. And we, so we have been together for nearly 20 years. And then, um, we've been married, married 17 we did a lot of traveling during that time due to the military. We've experienced a lot of amazing highs together, but we've experienced some lows, not just in our marriage, but um, through miscarriages and uh, struggles with infertil infertility and financial struggles and um, depression. And, you know, my husband has had to come a long ways from where he started. He, he has always been somebody that didn't really show his emotions, so he's kind of had to learn to deal with that a little bit too but um but it's very important to the lord that you find a good wife and that you seek after that wife and and the thing is is you know women are going to be looking for a good godly woman is going to be looking for a man that um that 
that can can work and can show responsibility and shows love and respect to the other people around them and and they're not going to be looking for chaos and so if you can just align yourselves up with that and women pray hard pray for that spouse that I mean I, I already pray for my children who are nine and 15 I pray for them every day that they find that spouse that is just perfect for them and that God sent them and that will lead them to him and through him because that's a, I mean that's a huge role for the husband I mean husbands the um spiritual well-being of your family is it falls on you the most I mean of course we're all responsible for our own uh, faith and our own walk with the Lord but your men are have a, a huge responsibility of that um and there are several places throughout the Bible where it you know it tells us that that men are supposed to be responsible and respectful and they're supposed to be kind and they're supposed to lead uh, the spouses and the children and women yes it does say of course in Colossians it says uh, 3 18 while cement to your husbands as it's fit for the fit in the Lord and but it also says husbands love your wives and be not get bitter against them I mean that means the Lord wants you to have that best friend relationship with your spouse. Not you come home, you're in a bad mood because you've had a rough day and you just don't feel like talking, you don't feel like fussing, you don't feel like dealing with anything. That's not that's not the relationship that God intended a marriage to be. God intended for you to want to come home, husband or wife, come home and talk to your spouse about your day and tell them, you know, what struggles you had that day, what, what great things happened that day because... They are a part of you and they need to know everything that happens within your life. And then maybe they can give you some kind of uplifting message, um, not just as a reassure, reassurance of who you are as a spouse, you know, but also reassurance in the Lord that, that the Lord has a plan for you. And so it's very important to, to speak to your spouse every day and to have a conversation with them about your day, whether it was good or, or bad, or just take time to do that. I know... <laughs> excuse me we all get busy between work and um our responsibilities with our children running the practices and, uh, and all that stuff i know we all get busy but it is a a huge um a, a very important task to i mean it, it shouldn't be a task it shouldn't be something that you know that you tr have trouble finding to, finding to do during the day i mean just have a conversation every day with one another but um, also in Ephesians, it does speak of wives submitting to your husband. And that doesn't mean oh, you have to bow down to them. You have to wait on them. You have to do all this stuff. That means to give them amount of respect that they, des that they deserve. I mean, I mean, there's plenty of times that my husband and I, we bicker or, or um, we don't see eye to eye on things. But at the end of the day, I give my input. I give my thoughts. But he is the person that is responsible for our family. So he is the one that makes the final decision. But also, he respects me enough to take into account my feelings and how I feel about it. And so he'll do that with an open heart in, this, in the sense that he's going to make sure that, I mean, why not do what she's asking if it, if it doesn't do any harm or if it's something that could benefit us he still expects uh, a level of respect among, amongst each other because husbands are supposed to love your wives as the Lord loved, or as Jesus loved the church. And Jesus loves the church a whole lot. I mean, you only he only wanted to build it up and grow it and make sure it, it flourished and did well. And that's what God expects from us within our marriage and your husbands. Um, that doesn't mean to hold some kind of bind over them where they have to do what you say, when you say it, how you say it. There's no, there, That's not a respectable marriage. But God, like I said, expected you to have one flesh and to be honorable and kind to each other. And that means respecting each other in the sense of lust. I mean, lusting after someone else or holding conversations with other people on social media or in person that person that isn't respectful of your marriage i mean flirting and i mean some people think it of it as it's harmless it's not but it is it does do harm and even if you have no ill intent within it it's still not appropriate 
I mean, I do have people that within the work world that I speak to on a daily occurrence, um, but I do it in the sense of building a friendship with someone and I do it in public with other people. And there's nothing that I would do that was inappropriate that would disrespect my husband and he would he would never do the same. I mean, it would he would never do it for me. Um, like text messages, he's in a group text message. One time someone sent an inappropriate message and my husband's response to it was, dude, you know, don't I don't I don't want to see that. I mean, you have to have a level of respect for each other. Um, you know, men are to respect and value your wives and to know the value in them because it is a rare, rare find to find a respectful and a respectable woman who does have that amount of respect for herself and love for the Lord. So when you do find that, and like vice versa, same with women to men, just know that you have something so precious and so beautiful. And it's very important. My, my, one of my biggest, um, or the phrases that I use the most is that men should be the head of the household so that the wives can be the heart. That means men, you, it's your responsibility. Of course, women can work or, you know what I mean? I, I, I work if that's, what's best for your family there's nothing wrong with that but men in the end of the day it's your job to be the provider for your family not just financially but to make sure that that everything that family needs at the end of the day that you made sure they had and women it's your job and I, back to the men it's not just a financial standpoint but it's an emotional and a spiritual one too it's your job to make sure they have that um and then women, your responsibility as the heart of the family is to make sure that, of course, if you bring in um, financial uh, in an income for the family, that's great too. That's just adding to whatever blessings that you have. But, but the thing is, is to be the heart of the family is such a precious, precious thing to give to your family because love is way better than any amount of money and way more important than any amount of money but the heart is whenever you can sit there and you can love that child enough and love that husband enough to to read your bible to him every day to pray i cannot i couldn't count on my hands how many times a day i pray for my family um first thing in the morning throughout the day as we travel whenever they leave to go somewhere whenever i leave to go somewhere before we go to bed and we're sick and believe me to this day, it's still nothing wrong with when you have a sick child placing your hands upon those ch children and praying for them and asking the Lord to take away whatever they have going on, whether it be, uh, be physical or whether it be emotional, whether it be something they're dealing with <clears throat> in school, a bully, or in today's society, the crazy worldly nonsense that they have to deal with every single day because it doesn't matter how much you teach them and talk to them they're still going to see it no matter where they go and so it's still out there but so it's your job to continue to talk to them every day to make sure that they are equipped with what they need to know and have a, a strong foundation within the lord um <clears throat> excuse me and also um, it's our job to do everything we can to be, to teach our kids that it's okay to be different, to be set apart from each other. That doesn't mean that you're better than anybody, but just to set yourself apart from other people in the sense of when we were fun and having a great time, oh, everybody wanted to be our friend. Everybody wanted to hang out with us. Everybody wanted to go uh, do with us or come over or whatever, but the moment that Excuse me. The moment that we stopped doing things that weren't pleasing to the Lord and and the drinking or partying or watching things that we shouldn't watch and doing things that we shouldn't be doing, the moment we stopped doing that, we stopped having all those friends. And that's okay because they're just in a different place in their life than we are now. 
And so that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, um, I mean, we would love to be a light for them or to be someone that they can talk to or, or that we would love to show them the love that the Lord has for people that abide in the, in him and his word. And we're here if they ever need us, but it definitely is a change. And we want to teach our children that that's okay, because I would rather stand with the Lord and that, than not. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> I mean, he's the one I have to face and he's the one I'm, I have to deal with for eternity. But, I mean, God tells us to, in Ephesians 1, 4 that we should be holy and without blame. That doesn't mean that we should be perfect and that we have to be, you know, we have to do everything perfect. Every single day of my life that I am reading my Bible and I'm growing, sorry, I'm an emotional person too. But every single day that I grow closer to the Lord, the Lord opens my eyes to something that I may not have even seen six months ago if I was doing that I may not have realized that I shouldn't have been doing but once I started reading scriptures and growing closer to him then the Lord started to open my heart and tell me of all the things that I was doing because that's the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives within me now and so now I feel his presence in everything that I do and everything that I watch and I, and I say, which I'm, I'm not always perfect. None of us are, but I feel his presence so strongly now that I just know that I have to be able to, to make better choices because I know when I'm doing something wrong and I know when I'm not because of the spirit that lives within me to tell me that. And like I said, I now, I mean, six months ago, I still loved the Lord, but today I'm not doing things that I, I may have been doing six months ago. And that's because of my spiritual walk with the Lord. <clears throat> because, I mean, in Galatians 5, 25, God, um, God then tells us, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So, for us to say, you know, every single day, we're supposed to live for the Lord, and I do it every day. And there are days that my kids, I can be in the kitchen doing dishes, and I'm listening to my worship music, or the Lord just touches me, and then I stand right there with water rolling down my arms, with my hands lifted high, and giving praise and glory to Him for everything that He's given to us. And my kids come in the room, my husband walks in the room, and they know I'm okay that I'm just doing something to, to glorify the Lord. And sometimes they'll walk in there with me and, and be in that moment with the Lord and the presence of the Lord with me. And there's sometimes that they'll just walk out and let me have my moment. But it's important that not just in church the Lord that the kids see us praising and glorifying the Lord, but in everything that we do. But just um just always remember that <clears throat> the marriage is just so important and and, you know, you have that saying that marriage is 50-50. Well, marriage isn't 50-50. Um, emotionally, and every second of the day, marriage should be emotionally 100% from both ways. He should be given 100% and I should be given 100% emotionally. <clears throat> but physically, it's not always like that. But there are some days where I'm doing more work, that I'm giving 60, 70, 80% physically, and then he is. And there's days that he is given 60, 70, 80% more physically, but that's a partnership. But it's not me relying on him every single day to do 90% of the work. Or it's not, you know, me relying on him or him relying on me to do most of the work. It's it at the end of the day, it's a marriage and together we're there to fill the gap for each other to fill in that whatever the other one's missing for that day or whatever we can do to help the other person for that day we're there for each other to do that and that means praying and and knowing that whatever is going on in our lives that because we have a foundation on <laughs> that is based on Christ that we're going to be there for each other emotionally physically spiritually it's it's just going to be something that that we can both say that we gave 100% of effort on every day and not just 50 50 
And I think it's really important to show your kids that because, <laughs> I mean, a good, strong marriage, you have to be willing to show your kids. And they see us fight and argue and they see us bicker and, and they have seen the times that we've struggled, but they have mostly seen the love that we have for each other and the respect that we have for each other. And they'll, I hope that someday that they'll, they'll just yearn for that so much because they were able to see it through us. And I know that's not always how it works, but but that they can never use the excuse that they didn't know what a good marriage or what a strong marriage lo looks like. Because to this day, I'm still immensely in love with my husband. And so is he to me. And, you know, a lot of people think that after you're together for so many years that, you know, things <clears throat> physically can get dull or get just not as fun or or whatever it is, but that's not true. And honestly, the longer that we're together physically, we are more attracted to each other. We hold a bond that's stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And it just, things never do get boring or, <clears throat> or without satisfaction. I mean, the Lord blesses us in that way because we have done so much for him. But thank you guys for watching again, and I really hope you were blessed by this. And um, I'm obviously I'm very very nervous about doing this because I feel ridiculous talking to myself. But I know that the, that the Lord's with us, and that I, I I prayed hard about this message before I did it, and I I believe hopefully it touched somebody, and I I know that I have been touched by people that have been a good, great example for us and our family. But I hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving.